In Nigeria, the Abia State House of Assembly has passed a law abolishing the Abia State Governors and Deputy Governors Pension Law No. 4 of 2021. The bill, which is known as the HAB 11, the Abia State Governors and Deputy Governor Pension Law Repeal Bill 2024 was sponsored by the Majority Leader and member representing the Arochuku constituency in the House, Mr. Okoro Uchina Kalu. And of course, joining me on the show at this time to make a sense of this is Uade Ehime, that's the head strategy and uh, public affairs uh, officer of uh, Naira Metrics. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me in the studio. It's always a pleasure being here. All right. And uh, at some point, we believe that uh, Mike Undu, lawyer and public affairs analyst from Abia State, will join the program. But uh, let me uh, start off with you, Uade. What do you make of this uh, particular bill? Uh, many have said it's about time, uh, but maybe this time around we might just be seeing a bit of willpower in making this particular bill see the light of day. Um, so first and foremost, um, I, I do commend um, the State Assembly in Abia State along with the governor um, for taking this bold step. Um, we know two other states have actually repealed um, this law, this um, state pension law that provides for pension for the governor and the state governor, and that's Stamfara and and Imo Zamfara in 2019, and I think Imo um, not too long ago. But for me, when you consider the fact that pensions are meant for those who are in employment or employees of of um, of um, the public service and private private service, then you start to wonder um, how do elected governors who are meant to to serve the people um, become entitled to 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 pensions and not just um, being entitled to pensions, but also being entitled to humongous amounts in pensions and, and benefits after they left the the office, um, percocides that for me are, are not are non taxable. Um, mm. They become public citizens after that. If they go back into um, private employment or, or private practice, then the 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 organisations will work around the modalities of providing that that pension. Um, but if they don't, then why will the states and taxpayers continue to to cough out so much money um, to pay governors and, and, and deputies for you know, serving, serving um, the public. Um, are they employees? If you look at the Pension um, Reform Act, 2004, 2014, and amended in 2022, the first part says that um, um, the pension is, is um, the provisions of the act shall apply to any employment in public service of the Federation public service of the federal capital territory, the public service of the state, the public service of the local governments, and the private sector. So are they employees? That's the first question we need to ask. Mm. Um, in, that, in, in, in the words of, of the Pension Act, I don't think they're employees. They've been elected by citizens, by taxpayers who expect them to provide service, and at the end of their tenure, um, either go on to, to uh, um, uh, anyway, continue, so, so some I want to their, disagree their and say uh, maybe they were employed by the people for that, um, you know, span of time. Uh, but, but uh, I mean, this, this of course, uh, is subject to, to arguments and of course, a uh, debate. But um, let's, let's, can you, can you give an idea of how, uh, deep this issue is? For instance, uh, what does say maybe an average ex, Governor, I was seeing in some reports uh, where uh, some of them, you know, are entitled to uh, a house in Lagos, a uh, house in Abuja, uh, and also uh, a brand new car of that year. I think every two years or four years, I really cannot remember the duration right now. But uh, can you just give an idea of what, say, maybe an ex-governor or deputy is entitled to? Um, so in some states, um, some of them as high as $300 million. Um, some mm. of them as high as 200 million, um, and also one entitled. off. No, annually. Annually. Yeah. Wow. They are pensions. They are not um, gratuities. They are pensions. So pensions are paid annually mm. or monthly, depending on on how you want to take it. But that's an annual figure um, in terms of 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 um, remunerations that come to you. Um, my, so my question is also, and also to, to those who, who have passed these bills, um, what if they go back to their private practice? Are they now going to be entitled to the taxpayers still paying 
this um, huge kind of emoluments back to them for serving the, the state. Um, because if I had a private practice and I come in and become a governor and I decide to go back into private practice, it means I'll be generating revenue for my businesses and I should be taking my pensions from there um, and, and living off it. So of, of, of how do you now equate that to you serving, whether it's one term or two term, and being paid such, um, such amounts? When you consider the fact that um, a number of people who have been in employment, duly employed, whether in the public or private service, um, it's most especially in the, in the public sector, are not being paid um, their, their pensions on a regular basis. Mm. Now, uh, another issue has to do with um, individuals that serve in various public uh, you know, service capacities. So what do I mean? A former governor, for instance, uh, leaves being a former governor and then becomes <laughs> uh, a member of the House. And uh, after it does a while there, maybe four to eight years, becomes a minister. The mm -hmm. same individual, and uh, is entitled to pension, gratuity at those levels, and then you find out that uh, this man, you know, keeps getting uh, emoluments from all sides on the state. What do you make of this? So it, it's for me, it becomes a, a bit. Um, I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to to find the right word, but it's amazing to me mm. um, in that case whereby you leave as a governor um, or a deputy governor, and then you get employed by by maybe the, the federal government as a minister, where you're paid um, salaries, entitlements, where your deductions for pensions are being made because you become a, a, an employee of, of, of the public service. Um, in true, when you consider the Pension Act, your contributory pe pension and, and um, both by the employer and the employee. So what are we saying? Are we going to now add that when the person leaves as a minister, when you decide, okay, you've retired from from public service, are you going to now continually pay that? And who pays that? The federal government pays one, the state pays another. So how many pen pensions are you really entitled to, really? And that's, that's a huge question. But for me, what I, what I, I cannot understand is why so much um, in terms of, of um, our benefits after you've left office? Because the average pensioner who works in public service is not entitled to all those benefits mm -hmm. that you get. Um, so what privileges do you think uh, you have as an elected official um, in comparison to someone who's worked for, for public or, or for in the public service for 30, 40 years? Are you going to now tell me that if a PAMSEC or a director general retires, then we should as well give them you know, a life, you, you are entitled to pensions at the end of the of your of your service but do we now tell them that we give life them- Life pension. Yeah, life pension, yeah, because those are um, in line with the pension Act, those things are, have, been, have been deducted um, and contributed to by, by the state and or the federal government. Are you now saying that we should give them the same kind of treatment? And if we do that to all those who get to the, to the, to the top of, of public service, how, how do you deal with those who are at the lower ebbs of public service? And these are questions that, um, for me, they're based on, on ethical values, in my own opinion, and what kind of ethical values and standards are you setting? Um, when we continue to talk about um, sustainability, um, if, if there's so much um, focus on, on, on the private sector to drive sustainable business, then the public sector also and, and governors are at the front of, of the state as, as public sec um, sector servants mm -hmm. to drive the same kind of sustainability. I, I mean, uh, these are real pivotal issues, but let's see some reactions uh, concerning this particular move you know, and uh, of course the reactions that uh, this has, you know, elicited, uh, particularly on social media. Uh, if we can have some of it come up on screen right now, uh, we know that Nigerians have started reacting. Uh, reflections uh, actually says that something remains to be done. Uh, what is that thing? Another bill to recover what has already been given to ex-governors and their deputies under the repealed law. Uh, I mean. <laughs> Well, we'll see how that works out. But uh, this means that uh, career politicians should stay off governance. Only those who have a heart to serve the people should throw their hat into the ring. Abia is setting the standard for good governance in Ninja. Uh, it will get to the federal level. Well, uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, do you think this bill will stand the test of time? Continue wallowing in confusion as this is dead on arrival. Chai, mm. that's a, a bitey one. But uh, I don't know. Why they, what, what do you make of this uh, <laughs> reactions? Particularly the last one. Uh, I mean, it's still at bill level. Do you see it um, having headway? 
Um, well, he, he, this, is, this is a governor that has decided that um, he doesn't believe that those pensions should be paid to, to um, he, governors and, and um, ex-governors of, of the state because it's a huge amount. Those resources can also go back into a number of, of, of areas within, within um, um, economic um, development within the states. Um, who knows, the next governor might come in and decide that he wants to repeal, um, repeal the, the law um, for the state. But, but my, the question now beholds on, on the state assemblies. What exactly are you doing? Are you just singing or dancing to the tunes of, of, um, of, of the governor? Um, why would you do that? You are meant, you have been, you are elected representatives of the people who are meant to ensure that you, um, you create laws and provide laws that are, would help develop and, and stem the economy of each state. So next thing you hear is when members of the state assembly, after you've done six, seven, eight terms, retire, um, you decide that, oh, okay, let's put them to, into, the pension, into the pension scheme. And at, at what point do we stop? And that's a question that we need to ask ourselves from an ethical um, perspective, from a sustainability perspective. I mean, um, uh, and I guess, and I do hope it would stand the test of time. I mean, talking about sustainability too, the issue of cuts in the cost of governance, which uh, is uh, the core objective of this particular move, comes to the fore. We know that even you know at the federal level, there has been these talks as regards cuts in the cost of governance, even though quite uh, a number of the moves. Uh, Nigerians have actually, you know, <laughs> asked if at all they were done in true sincerity. But how much of an impact do you think a move like this would have on cutting uh, the cost of not just governance this time, but government expenditure in that state, for instance? Um, I, I don't know how much the exact um, amount in terms of emoluments the ex-governors get. Um, however, when you when you take an example of of a state that that um, the ex governors get three hundred million, or a state that the ex governors get two hundred million, that is already two hundred million that comes back into the coffers of of, of um, government. Um, if you are you're saying that the person is going to have, for instance, there are states that have a house in 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 that state and a house in Abuja, we know what the property value market is in in. In, in Abuja, for instance, that's money that's coming back into the coffers of, of the government. Because let's also remember, it's not just um, buying the property, it's also maintaining that property. Because um, some of the laws provide for you um, the same kind of, well, maybe not the amount of people that you have in government house, but the same kind of services that have been provided to you when you were in government house. And that is a huge cut. Um, in, in, in the number of, um, I mean, the amount of monies that used to run these homes um, mm. uh, for governors who are no longer in, in, in government house. Mm. Another issue, again, is if at all uh, moves like this would uh, be replicated across all states, uh, particularly major states, say maybe like Lagos, for instance, or Port Harcourt, uh, and more importantly at the federal level, do you see uh states you know following suit even at the federal level in the coming weeks maybe months or even years well i at the federal level i, I don't think is is <laughs> the only two people who are entitled to um um what's it called this kind of of benefits after they leave office and there is and that has been prescribed i think it's been prescribed in the constitution the president and the vice president and that's also because of the fact that they've led led the country um, uh, so I, I, don't, I don't see it going that far in, at the federal level, but the states as, as the state assemblies decide on, on um, providing um, pensions or, or um, pensions at the end of, of a governor's term, then these are things we need to check. The constitution already provides for the president and, and the vice president, except we're saying that the national assembly is going to now include it into um, a new a new constitution or amend the constitution in that direction. Uh, maybe my legal my legal friends will help me better in the, in this case. But I don't see it being rampant. But I do think that it's something and it's a statement that has to come from the top. Um, when I say the top, uh, most most preferably from the presidency in terms of saying, okay, we want to cost cut the cost of governance, not just at the federal level but also at the state levels, because let's let's 
let's consider the fact that 200 million a year is, is probably so much money that you can even use to pay pensions of pensioners who have worked 30, 35 years in, in states. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's also the issue of um, looking at uh, the uh, robustness of this, particularly as it affects uh, governance in the state. We know, I mean, on a personal note, I know that uh, my mother, for instance, worked for the government for uh, quite a number of years, and she, <laughs> I mean, she retired uh, well, and uh, she worked with Lagos State, even though, I mean, she was paid all her entitlements and all. Um, I don't think she got this kind of large. She was the teacher, by the way, right? And uh, you look at this and you see figures where ex-governors, ex-deputy uh, governors make so much, you know, just for serving for eight years. Some would also argue that um, they have served the country and for that reason, they deserve what they get because uh, being the number one person in the state, you, you made friends, you made enemies, uh, it's, it's assumed you gave your best. Hence, um, they should be compensated fairly. What do you consider a fair compensation for somebody who held public office, for instance, and uh, served this nation? <laughs> um, that, that's, that's, a, that's a brilliant question, but let's also remember that those who have worked in the employment of public service have served um, the nation, have served the country, and have served the, um, have, have served the, the people um, by ensuring that they do their work diligently, they write the policies that are meant to drive um, the economy and, and, and the social um, and sustainability aspects of, of the country. Um, so what's a fair amount to that? Their, their, their pensions are based on today the contributory pension scheme, and before now, what has been contributed towards the pension scheme for them. Um, so, and it's based on the percentage of the salaries that they earn. Um, so we know, we know that there is a provision for salaries for the president, the vice president, the governors, the state, the, the um, state governors, the deputies. So if you say you need a fair compensation um, in terms of that, then it should be based on the standards that have been set by the Pension Act. Um, are you deducting their pensions as, as while they are in, in office from the salaries and the emoluments that they are entitled to? Remember that there is, um, there's an, there is um, an, authority, um, an, an agency that provides for how much the president should earn, how much the governors should earn, how much you, you, um, deputy governors should earn, and these have been clearly stated. So if the public servant who works in government has a computation for his pension based on the law, then that's what you should be. So a fair, aside from the security details, um, which becomes uh, an issue of, of um, the state providing um, additional cover um, because of, of, the, of the position that they held before now, I think that should be a fair, a fair replication because at the end of the day, people serve the states or the, fed, or the, fed, or the federation 30, 35 years, and their pensions are based on, on the amounts that they've earned over time. Mm. Now, let's uh, focus on Abbey Estate briefly. We've seen some of the moves by the current governor, right? Um, we know what he did concerning power, where he was able to a very large extent at least stabilize power in that state with the, of course, launch of that uh, uh, power generating plant. And, uh, I mean, some other moves uh, to boost the economic fortunes of the state. Uh, what do you suggest or what do you think it could further improve on? Uh, what areas do you think that, um, you know, is, is, is not so well in terms of uh, the ratings that you feel that uh, the governor should look into? And uh, how best do you think he can take the state from where it is at the moment to, to, to I mean, where it ought to be? Well, I, I, I think he started well. Um, it's, it's, it's early days. It's almost a year. Um, so we can we can um, say over the first um, one year, these are the things that he has done. But I also do think that we need to go back to what were the things that he had promised that he was going to do over the first time and mm. start to look at them. How many of them has he, provide, has he, um, has he provided for, for the citizens of, of Abia? Um, what are the next things that he's going to do? So let's look at his track records and, and start to say that these were the things that you said you were going to do. Um, he talked about power, he talked about road, 
some of those things are already ongoing in terms of, of um, building the infrastructure. And the one thing I always say is when, when um, um, administrations do what they say they are going to do, you don't need to be the one to tell yourself that you've done A, B, C, or D. The people would say that, and we're beginning to see that in, in, in the number of people who are talking about what has gone on over the last nine months in Abia State. And these are the people who are the ones who will tell you, in, whether it's in two or three years' time, whether you are, you are fit to be reelected to continue where you're going. Um, governance is a continuance, and these are the things that we need to do. So there are, there, are, there are benchmarks that have been set. There are things that he has said they are going to do. How many of them has he done? And how is he going to do the other ones? How is he going to provide those? And those are the things that we need to start looking at. But for now, I guess he's on the right track. Well, Ade, let's, let's look at it uh, from a federal perspective, too. We know the current economic situations of many uh, Nigerians who uh, are finding it even hard to feed themselves. Uh, do you think the current administration is uh, towing the right direction in terms of trying to uh, steer up the economy into positive strides? Um, well, I, I do believe, and, and this is my opinion, that um, some of the policies that have been put, up, put in place um, or have been um, have been said to be put in place are good policies, but we need to actually start to see that those policies are being implemented and implemented as quickly as possible. Um, the one area, and this is my personal opinion, and I, I've, I've shared that um, in 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 on different programs that that have appeared on. Um, my one personal opinion is the issue of palliatives. I do think that I'm not a big fan of palliatives, and I've never been. Um, whether it was this administration or the previous administrations or the ones before that. Um, so what I do think is how do you get um, infrastructure development to start to flow as quickly as possible? Um, one way, in my own opinion, I think that can be done is working with states, um, the states, um, the, the Federal Ministry of Work, the State Ministry of Work, bringing in direct labor towards stemming. Um, you, you, you said you don't people. believe in palliatives. In palliatives, no. I, to a large extent, I don't think so, mm. because what I what what then happens is you give out you give monies to people, um, and you're not creating new value. It's just being spent. But but and, some would also tell you that at least it's not it's not the permanent solution. It's just a shocker, or a shock absorber to help you manage the current situation. So I mean, in place of palliatives, what would you rather suggest as an immediate? A cushion effect and so yes palliatives are a cushioning effect but for how long do we continue to use palliatives as cushioning effects um when i say i don't believe in palliatives it's been on since the what's it called since um foil subsidy went away the exchange rate and it's become the norm now we're not seeing that development in terms of you know putting um um infrastructure development at the forefront. I know that people would, tell, would say, oh, you need large, large companies and large corporations to drive the infrastructure development um, um, process, but there are quick fixes and quick wins that could bring people into direct labor and direct um, remuneration that would also create consumer spending. Um, how much can the government continually give out to boost the kind of consumer spending that is required? When you have an economy that has about 78 trillion, you know, um, 78 tri trillion in the economy, and we're not seeing the velocity move as quickly as we think it should be to All stem right. that, then I, I, I do think that there are other ways in terms of building that infrastructure, maybe through direct labor and working with, with those large organizations to ensure that the government works together and get people working and All earning. Right. All right, uh, Oade Aime, uh, head strategy and, of course, our public affairs uh, uh, officer of uh, Naira Metrics, uh, thank you so much for being on the program today. Thank you for we having me. Appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thank you.